up everyone, it's Josh here from the Architect Student Blog and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to render solely using SketchUp. No V-Ray, no Lumion, no render engines. All of the images that you'll be shown today are direct exports straight from SketchUp with post-production and Photoshop. Now, I'm not discounting V-Ray, I'm not discounting Lumion or any of the other render engines that are out there. I think the images that you can produce from those are sort of incredibly photorealistic. But what I found when I was at university, I needed the time and efficiency to be able to do multiple renders, either all at once or whilst things are going on. And I just didn't have the time to wait for the renders to process. And also I, I developed a bit of my own style with it. I did quite like the way the, the images turned out. I was always really inspired by CJ Lim at the Bartlett and that kind of different way of rendering the images. And they've been quite popular on the Architect Student Blog Instagram's page. So I know that a lot of you out there also like that kind of style. And this is a, a hybrid between the two. We're going for sort of semi-realistic imagery, but also, you know, it's still going to have that semi-line drawing, hand-drawn style. And that's what I'm going to show you in today's video. I'm going to break it down. I'm going to show you how I exported it straight from SketchUp, bringing it into Photoshop, all of the elements in post-production that make it add that element of realism. So let's get into the video. So here we are with a residential property. As you can see, there is some detail in the foreground. You are going to want to add some detail so it can give depth to the drawing. And then we're just going to want to start setting up our scenes. So this is the first scene. We've got one and what I've done is I've actually edited the style in SketchUp to remove the lines and the profiles. And to do that, all you're going to need to do is go up into the styles tab and go across to edit. And when you've gone into edit, you'll see that there is edges and profiles. If you deselect those, what that will do is that will just will completely remove the edges. And that's just going to allow us to get the image looking a bit more crisp when we take it into post-production in Photoshop. So we're going to export that. And again, another key one with exporting from SketchUp is your export settings. As you can see there, you're going to want to go in and actually make sure that your export settings are set up to 8,000 pixels, and that is going to be just slightly bigger than an A3 page. Again, feel free to amend that to suit whatever you need it to be in terms of your imagery. But I normally work to that. It doesn't take too long to export and you're also then not working with too big a file size in Photoshop. The next step is to then export another image and that's going to be solely a line drawing. So I've gone into the default styles and just gone into the line drawing. And what we're doing is making sure we've got the profiles ticked on for this one, because uh, as you'll see, if they're ticked off, you are going to lose some of the detail of the image. Uh, and then we're just going to do an export of that one. What that's going to allow us to do when we get into Photoshop is just edit the amount of the of line drawing that we're actually going to be able to see. So once you've done both of those, you're going to end up with something a bit like this. I've got the two images overlaid with one another. I have slightly increased the size, as you'll see in the folder name. It is actually SK80%. I always name how much I transform the image by, which is going to allow me to then make quick edits if I need to amend anything in the future. And as you can see, I'm just increasing and decreasing the opacity of the line drawing, which is sat over the top. And that's going to allow me to introduce either more or less of the line work. It does create a bit of an overlay. So if you want to remove that, you can put, put it on a multiply layer. But I do find that just having that element of a little whitewash on there does just add to the crispness of the image. And then what I've done is I've just duplicated the layer, put a multiply on it. So that's going to allow me to in increase or decrease the level of shadow. The next step is just applying a layer mask, as you can see here. All I've done for the layer mask is simply remove the background and the sky. Nothing too over the top, but what I like to do is actually add my own background and my own sky and start adding some detail to the rear of the image, which again, just makes it look that little bit more realistic. And that's gonna be the next step, adding the skyline and some clouds in the background. So first of all, I just use the block color. Very simple, just a nice blue, nothing over the top. I try to keep it a little bit faint if I can. And then all I do is apply a black and white gradient layer on a pass through over the top. And what that's gonna do is that just allows that little bit more depth to the rear of the, of the skyline and the clouds at the back. Again, to do that, just use the gradient tool. And next, we're gonna start adding some clouds. As you can see here, again, you can do this however you want. I have my own style. I actually like to go for more block clouds and then just reduce the opacity of them. To do this, all I've done is I've gone onto Google and I've just found a PNG image of a cloud. 
You can keep it as it is if you want to, if you want to go for a slightly more semi-realistic. But like I say, I've kind of developed my own style with this and all I then do is open them, bring them into Photoshop and go to image adjustments and brightness and saturation and just completely bring the brightness right up to 100% and that just completely whites out the image. And then play around with the opacity. Some you might want to have a different opacity so it looks like they're sitting further in front or behind. And again, all that's going to do is just add that little bit more depth to the image, which is ultimately what we're trying to do. Because we're brought in straight from SketchUp, often they don't have very much depth other than the shadows. So what we try to do in post-production is just add that little bit more depth and detail. Again, introducing things in the foreground and the background, changing the opacity so it looks like they're sitting in the sky either further forwards or further the backwards. The next step is adding some trees. As you can see here, I've got quite a few. This is very simple again. Try not to overcomplicate things. All I do to do this is go into filter, render, and come down to tree. You might have seen in some of my previous videos, I've talked about this often hidden in Photoshop. I don't think many people know about it, but Photoshop actually has its own ability to render trees. You've got a selection of about 20 or 30 trees to choose from. You can then change the light direction, the amount of leaves, the branch thicknesses, so that you never have one tree the same. And all I do then is just copy those across in the background, as you can see here, changing the variety just to keep the intrigue, even though it's in the background, and I'll just drop those into the rear of the image. There's two ways of doing this. You can either apply a layer mask or what I like to do to make my life a little bit easier is I just drop these behind the SketchUp export that I've done. Again, another reason why putting a layer mask over the original export from SketchUp is of much ease because it allows me to just chop and change things in the background without really having to affect all that much in the image. Next, we're going to start adding some detail to the foreground. And again, as I've said quite a few times, the key to making these images look more realistic is to add depth to the image. So what I'm going to start to do is just bring some vegetation and some detail into the foreground of the image. When I turn the layer on here, you'll see I've put a tree in the front of the pro property, just on the left-hand side. Again, same as process I've done for the background. I've just rendered a tree, changed the angle of it, just brought it in front of that garden table there, just to add that little bit more depth. And on the right-hand side, I've also included a little shrub. And I've also just painted some leaves over the pergola to make it look like there's vegetation growing on that. Again, don't have to do this, but I think it does make a difference to the image and just adds that little bit of detail. Again, can't have an architecture render without some birds in the background. That is just a straight download of a PNG from Google. And then another thing to do, which does add that little bit more detail, is just adding some shadows from the trees that would be surrounding the property. Same process again. All I'm doing is taking one of the foreground trees, duplicating that layer, and bringing it in front of everything. I'll then go into the adjustments layer, go onto hue and saturation, drop that lightness all the way down so it's a solid black, and then use the free transform tool just to lay it flat as if it's sitting over like, like any other shadow would. Again, you'll have to play around with that, depending on which way the sun direction's going. And then if you want to just add that little bit more of detail to it, you can use the Gaussian blur, which is just gonna blur that shadow slightly rather than it really standing out in the foreground. Just a nice little trick. I think it just adds again, we'll talk about adding depth to these images. And, and I think that is another one that adds quite a little bit of, of detail there. And then the final one, again, not necessary, but I do like to add just some reflections to the windows. One of the benefits of exporting the line drawing is it does make it easier to select the windows using the magic wand tool. All I've done for this is I've duplicated the trees at the back, I've merged it as a group and then applied a layer mask solely to the window areas and then I just drop the opacity down to 20% and again use the Gaussian blur tool just to quite simply make it look as if it's kind of blurred as it would be if it was a, a natural reflection. Again, it's entirely up to you whether you want to do this or not. It, it does add a little bit of extra time. You know, you're having to go back through and select all of the, 
the window. So it's entirely up to you whether you want to do this stage or not. But I do find, especially with areas where you've got quite a lot of glazing, it can make quite a bit of a difference. And then the final step, again, all down to personal preference. You do not have to do this if you don't want to. I just like to add a little light stream or a lens flare over the frontage of the image. Again, it's just adding that little bit of extra depth. To do that, all I simply do is use the white paint tool, paint some lines in the direction that I want the light stream to come in, go filter, blur, motion blur, and then I just adjust the angle of the blur to suit whichever direction I want the light rays to go in. And there we have it, it is as simple as that. That is how to create a render solely from SketchUp. I know there's a lot to take in there, a lot of steps to go through, so make sure you go back through and just go through each step slowly in your own time. I appreciate that the simple residential design used for this tutorial is probably going to be a lot more simple than your university project. So I thought I'd show you a few examples from my master's degree project, which as you can see, a lot more detail, but the process is still exactly the same. Export straight from SketchUp with post-production in Photoshop. Yes, of course, it takes a little bit longer in that post-production. You need to put a bit more detail in there. It does take slightly longer, but the process remains the same. As always, if you found this video valuable, please leave a like or a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to make sure you don't miss our next video. See you next time.